Welcome to Ricochet 19. Diez y nueve. Find out what's new in the news. Talking the end of Disney Infinity. Don't talk about that. I know. Persona 5. Should we, we talk about that? Yeah, we can talk about that. And a weekend with Harry Potter. All right. Disney is canceling the best-selling Toys to Life series, Disney Infinity. Ah, oh, this breaks my heart. So, they will have two final retail releases. That's three new characters from Alice to the Looking Glass this month, and Finding Dory Playset in June. They will no longer be self-publishing games. Tell us what you think about this. We are huge Disney Infinity fans. And by that, we mean we've bought a whole lot of them. We have all of Series 1, I believe, <laughs> a good chunk of Series 2, and then once the Star Wars ones started coming out, we couldn't resist. So, I'm really sad about this because I feel like this is the most exciting Toys to Life franchise. I mean, the Lego one looks pretty cool. We haven't got into it yet. Yeah, we don't get into much because we have such a backlog of things to do. It's true. I mean, we started with Skylanders, mm -hmm. and while I enjoyed Skylanders, I really liked Disney Infinity because you could actually play as the characters you know. Mm -hmm. And once they started releasing Marvel and Star Wars, it was awesome. So tell us what you think about this. Something new in the works that they're not self-publishing? Are they working with someone else? Are you sad? Are you happy? Tell us what you think. Yeah, I'm sad. I'm sad. But on a happy note, Japan finally has a release date for Persona 5. It will launch on September 15th, again in Japan, PS3 and PS4, no Vita release, at least not that we've heard of. While we wait for a release date for North America and Europe, check out this awesome Collector's Edition. The 20th anniversary themed Collector's Edition includes an art book, a soundtrack with songs from the previous Persona games, a series-inspired DLC, including outfits from Persona 3 and 4, available for 13,800 yen, or roughly 128 <laughs> US dollars. September will also be the launch for the Persona 5 anime in Japan. It's pretty cheap for as far as collector's editions go anymore. Yeah, comparing that to the Final Fantasy collector's edition, it's quite a bit cheaper. To that one, the Call of Duty one we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. I think we got another one we're talking about this week, so... Yep. So, do you think it'll be out this year? Yeah, I do. But closer to the holiday season for North America. Ah, I think it'll either launch right around that date in North America, mm -hmm. or it'll get pushed back to next year. Well, hopefully not. Yeah, it just depends on how the translations are going. I've seen some of the costumes and they're quite impressive. I don't think it's something I'll be cosplaying, since I'll be cosplaying in the summer and it would be quite <laughs> hot, but... She was checking them out, though. I was. Uh, CD Projekt Red, this is something we predicted, has revealed that the Blood and Wine expansion pack for Witcher 3 Wild Hunt will come with a Gwent set. That's the part that we predicted. <laughs> the release date is May 31st. That's the part that we did not predict. Uh, as expected, we again, heard some rumblings, so. <laughs> Gwent box set that will have Nilfgaard and the Northern Realms deck. So then, you know, if you have the previous Hearts of Stone expansion set, then you'll have four decks of cards. Uh, so that's really exciting. Yeah, I need to get back in. I need. I've just started my first playthrough of The Witcher. I have my experience log up on our website. My first playthrough, as if he intends to play through multiple times. <laughs> but I am going at this hardcore style, death march. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the hard mode. Uh, on May 4th, EA announced that the team behind Titanfall and Titanfall 2, launching later this year, is working on an unannounced Star Wars project. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. It looks like... Oh, wait, just kidding. 
I don't know anything else about that. <laughs> Apparently she has to keep it to herself. Shh. Secret. Um, however, what's not secret is that Turtle Rock Studios, developer behind Left 4 Dead and Evolve, is working on a brand new IP. That is because a job listing on the studio's website has a position for animator programmer. There was something interesting about this listing. For a new unannounced intellectual property being described as cutting edge game targeting next generation hardware. Next gen? VR, perhaps? Or NX? Or what are we talking about here? We don't know. Could just be left over from like last generation <laughs> and they're like, recycle that job posting! <laughs> it might be. Hopefully we'll find out more at E3. Hopefully. The Pokemon Company has announced the starters and release date for Sun and Moon. The games will launch on November 18th, take place in Alola, featuring three adorable starters, Rowlet the Grass Slash Flying Owl, Litten the Fire Kitten, <laughs> and Poplio the Water Seal. There are details from the Pokemon website. I'll read them to you in my best reading voice. Here it comes. Rowlet. Rowlet can attack without making a sound. It flies silently through the skies, drawing near to its opponent without being noticed, and then lashing out with powerful kicks. It can also attack from a distance using the razor-sharp leaves that form yeah. part of its feathers. That sounds scary. <laughs> it's okay that it looks like a tiny chicken nugget or something. It's totally harmless looking. Its visual abilities are impressive. The darkness of night is no obstacle to Rowlet. It can twist its neck nearly 180 degrees from front to back. It's kind of disturbing. I saw a video. <laughs> so it can see directly behind itself. It has a habit of turning its head while in battle to face its trainer and receive instructions. That's good. Good eye contact is important. The move Leafage attacks an opponent by striking it with leaves. <laughs> Rowlet knows this move from the moment it becomes your partner. Well, that's adorable. We already have an out Pokemon though. Moving on. Litten. Litten can attack with flaming hairballs. No, I didn't make that up. I swear it's here. It's Meowth. That's right. <laughs> it's yeah, we have cat Pokemon already too. It's <laughs> we have fire cat Pokemon already too. Its fur is rich in oils and immensely flammable. Litten grooms itself by licking its fur and then uses the collected fur as fuel for fireball attacks. See Zoe, <laughs> she knows what's going on. She lacks the fuel, but she's got the fire and the desire. Oh, that she does. <laughs> I thought you were going to sing the song, but you're not going to sing it. They don't want to hear me sing. It's okay. Continue on. When the time comes for Litten to shed its old fur, like a snake, it all burns up in a glorious blaze. That's creepy. The move Ember attacks an opponent by firing a small flame at it. This is like Charmander has Ember. But knows this move from the moment it becomes your partner. Poplio can snort out balloons made of water. It's snotting at you. <laughs> <laughs> we already have seal Pokemon. Watch it spin out water balloons. Oh, spin out, just kidding. S watch it spin water balloons into a playful battle strategy. Both frivolous and hardworking, like me. Poplio can <laughs> easily get carried away. Unleashing enough power in battle to make quite a spectacle. But Poplio's determined spirit means it can usually be found practicing hard on its balloon skills. Like me. The water <laughs> gun move attack- I'm really horrible at blowing up balloons, it's sad. Uh, the water gun move attacks an opponent by firing a jet of water. Poplio, guess what? Knows this move from the moment it becomes your partner. So? <laughs> which one are you gonna choose? The kitten, obviously. But the seal's so cute. You saw the picture, didn't you? It's really goofy, yes, I've seen like the picture. like blowing things up and balloons. And... Yeah, well, I was just talking with Kyle about this earlier today, our, our dear friend Kyle in Indiana, who's quite upset, actually, because we have the grass, water, fire thing they always do. There are already owl Pokemon, there are already cat Pokemon, there are already seal Pokemon. Also, he feels that the grass owl concept, it's kind of stupid. So, I don't know, though. I was like, well, what else should I expect? And then I thought, the game is called Sun and Moon. Why can't the starters be a dark-type Pokemon and a light or fairy-type Pokemon? Yeah, those those are pretty new. 
That would be a pretty big change for the series, though. Yeah, I mean, maybe you wouldn't even encounter bug Pokemon your first time out in the, in the, you know. What would you do if you didn't encounter bug Pokemon your first time out? Celebrate, because they're kind of creepy. <laughs> Oh, so you're one of those girls that are out in the leaves and rummaging through the grass and you're like, why do I keep encountering bug Pokemon? Do yeah. You, do you like the cave better? No. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Pokemon is such a huge part of our childhoods. Kyle too. Uh, I feel like no matter what they do, as in, like, doing the same thing over and over again, I'm still going to keep playing. And that's the thing. As long as people continue buying, what reason do they have to mix it up? They, I mean, they, I just rebought the originals. This is true. Why, I do not know. He played it for, like, two days and then didn't pick it up again. I played it for probably two weeks, and in those two weeks I put in like 20 hours. I just keep getting through the same part of all the games and then I'm like, oh, I've been all these places before. <laughs> Next thing. That is the problem is they just start to feel familiar. Mm -hmm. Whether I've played the game before or not. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully Sun and Moon will have something a little new and exciting. Hope it has a few tricks up its sleeve. That would be nice. I mean, we hear the only thing Nintendo is demoing at E3 is the new Legend of Zelda. Mm-hmm. I've heard that. But it would be nice to see the Pokemon Company mm -hmm. show up with these games, of course. I don't think they would show up separately with these games. Huh. wonder if they have before. have to look into that. Who knows? Until then... Kojima spoke with Famitsu about an upcoming game. Siliconera translated the interview with Kojima saying, quote, I won't say that it's an open world title, but those that enjoy playing today's AAA titles, such as The Division and Uncharted, will be able to play it smoothly. Those are two pretty different games. He just means if you like new games, you'll be set. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put, to the point. Don't put words in the man's mouth. <laughs> he just says, we'll be able to play it smoothly. That means not a lot to me. He did have a little bit more to add, though. He goes on to mention that the secret is in the new studio's logo. We've heard this before. We have. I don't have a clue what it is. It's a skull in a mech suit. It looks it's Riggs Undead. Ooh. <laughs> I'm totally kidding, I have no idea. It would be pretty fun, though. No. No one did. <laughs> Thanks. EA has officially announced that the next Battlefield game will be called Battlefield 1. <laughs> it will take place in an alternate reality version of World War 1. I'm pretty excited about this. It will launch not on 1, as a battlefront, battlefield one, World War One, no, October twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> they had to toss a one in there somewhere. One one one. Uh, there's a pretty cool collector's edition for a lowly two hundred and nineteen ninety nine. Includes the Battlefield One Deluxe Edition base game, collector's edition statue at fourteen inches tall, exclusive steelbook and cloth poster, deck of playing cards. Messenger Pigeon 2, with exclusive DLC content, not the actual <laughs> Messenger Pigeon, fear not, Zoe. Uh, exclusive patch and premium packaging. Mmm, that premium packaging. Always excited for the premium packaging. EA CFO Blake Jorgensen said during a recent earnings call that Battlefield 2... Battlefront 2. Why do the games have such similar names? <laughs> Wait, I was just talking about Battlefield. Yeah, now you're on Battlefront. Ugh. Battlefront 2 will have bigger and better worlds. He also added that it will make use of content from the new movies, though he didn't name any outright. Okay, I don't know what he's going to cut, so I'm just telling you he put Battlefront right next to Battlefield, and he put the wrong word in the first one. 
and it's really messed me up. <laughs> it's battlefielded me up. <laughs> if you want to see it all, make sure you check the bloopers. <sighs> okay, moving on. EA is reporting that we will find out more about Mass Effect Andromeda at the EA Play event on June 12th. We plan on being there. We will cover it live. Aaron and have Flynn? it direct to you. Aaron Flynn, the general manager of BioWare, also confirmed that we will not be seeing Mass Effect Andromeda until early 2017. Another pushback, another casualty of the calendar. Saying we will need the right amount of time to make sure we deliver everything the game can be and should be. Flynn goes on to say that the new game will have unprecedented level of freedom for Mass Effect experience for the players and they will be the first game in the series built on the Frostbite engine. That's pretty cool. Indeed. Electronic Arts is also keeping in close contact with Nintendo. We'll be uh, creating games for Nintendo NX, if it makes sense. But only if it makes sense. Patrick Soderlund, Executive Vice President at EA, is the one who said that. While we're on the NX, rumors have popped up that the NX will use cartridges. What? I miss blowing in those things. <laughs> it's about I time. I don't think these are the type you blow into. Screen, crit <laughs> Screen critics spotted that Macronix, the Chinese memory manufacturer, is expecting an increased order of ROM chips from Nintendo. Their company chairman, Wu Min, also made specific reference to the NX in the latest company briefing. Nintendo currently purchases the cartridges for the 3DS from them. It could just be that they're expecting to ship games for Christmas. I think they're talking about quarter four of their next fiscal year, which is the March season. We can speculate. As we always do. A Steam listing has popped up for Final Fantasy X Ten Two HD. I know, speaking of Kyle, he was pretty excited about this. Everything we do is really just for Kyle. If anybody else watches it, that's awesome. And if you do, <laughs> check out our new <laughs> Ricochet Games Cast t-shirt, which is up on Amazon now. It is not actually just for Kyle, but mostly. It looks like the game will be hitting PC on May 12th. That's 10 10 2. According to the latest issue of Famitsu via Nintendo Everything, Hamtara will be an available pet in the next story of Seasons game, Good Friends of Three Villages. Really? Yes. Hamtaros. I love Hamtaro. Marvelous is also. <laughs> I want to say Marvel. <laughs> Marvelous is also working with Nintendo to include Mario costumes as well. You can play with Hamtaro as Luigi or Mario. He can be like your little toad. It will be adorable. It didn't go that far yet, but I know we both really love Story of Seasons. Yeah, except for that glitchy one. Well, <laughs> yes, but we will blame that on the Harvest Moon uh, localization team. Will likes to give me crap about the fact that I like charts so much. So I made a chart for Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth. Yeah, and I made a chart for Paragon. Yeah, but I made a chart for the Story of Seasons <laughs> to make sure I hit all of the life events and did all of the quests that aren't so common or easy to, to see and you have to do certain things at a certain day or a certain time of day and he made use of it. It's true. So charts are awesome. I delved into your chart. Ooh, that's uncharted territory. <laughs> <laughs> the deals. Deals of the week. PlayStation Ubisoft sale. I never know when to say Ubisoft, Ubisoft. I don't know. Say what you want. Whatever you're called, you're having a sale. Watch the Hugs for $9.99. Rocksmith 2014 edition for $14.99. She glares at me because she wants to get back in, and I bought her the game. For PC, she, and I don't have a computer that can play it. Or a guitar here. In or Pasadena. a guitar here. As well as discounts on The Division and Far Cry Primal. This is a good time to probably jump in, and a good price for Watch Dogs, mm -hmm. before the sequel comes out later this year. Indeed. Focus Home Interactive Sale. 
Sticks with a Y for seven forty nine. You've played that one. Yeah, it's really fun. Divinity Original Sin for twenty nine ninety nine. And a ton of farm simulator games. <laughs> Don't make fun. I've never actually played a farm simulator game. I other than Harvest Moon. <laughs> but th you? these actually have tractors. I miss very much riding a tractor. I'm just going to put it out there. Well, when we are back in Indiana, mm -hmm. because we will be covering Gen Con, mm -hmm. if you follow our social media, you already know. But I don't think we've announced it on Ricochet. You're going to post a picture of me riding a tractor? I think we should work on getting her on one. You don't have to work on it. <laughs> it's easy, but it's kind of odd. <laughs> Anyway, if you have a thing for tractors, you're in luck. Uh, deals with gold. Call of Duty games are on sale with Advanced Warfare going for only $24. Roy McElroy PGA Tour is also $16. Will says, don't buy this. Please don't buy this. That's mean. Why do I say not to buy it? You can get it as a part of EA Access, which is $4.99 a month or $29.99 for the year. So for essentially double the cost of this one game, you can have EA Access, which includes Dragon Age Origins, tons of sports titles, and all sorts of games for 30 bucks. Or for the cost of three months, you could have EA Access. Play that game and many others. Just buy the physical copy. Or if you have an Xbox One and you want to play this game, check out the Access. If you are a Capcom fan, you may want to rush over to the Humble Bundle, but wait until the video is done. This week they have the Capcom Super Turbo HD Remix Bundle. Just put a bunch of words in there, huh? <laughs> Sounds like a normal Capcom Super name. duper awesome possum, uh, which includes <laughs> Resident Evil Revelations, Resident Evil 6, two Devil May Cry games, and a lot more to come. It's a nice bundle. Very nice, very nice. Super duper awesome Turbo HD Remix Bundle. You got it, dude. As, as Kim would say, awesome possum. Indeed. The possum is awesome. So, we've been talking about me playing Witcher 3. Mm -hmm. I hope to have my round two fight of impressions up later this week. But, there is another game we pretty much spent several days playing. Mm -hmm. What was that game, Kimber? That was Neo, and when he says we spent several days playing, he means, like, I died several days. <laughs> Replayed the same five minutes of the game over and over again. Forever. <laughs> it was probably the most grueling game I have ever played. It is known. But at the same time... It was probably one of the best games I have ever played. What? I would not go that far. Well, when we get done filming Ricochet, we're going to delve right into Neo, record our impressions, have some video footage of the game for you to check out. So, click right here. Probably Friday. <laughs> if you want to check that out. While we get that up, I know we'll be having the Imperial Assault video go up tomorrow. So that should be up as well. Tomorrow when? Tomorrow. Ooh, you are right, because this will go up on Thursday. Mm -hmm. This should go up on Wednesday, so you should already be able to find it on the YouTube site. Of course, have Paragon going up already on the site. Those charts that you heard about. Yes, she does have lots of charts. And we have watched this week Idiocracy. Mm -hmm. That was my homework from my coworker. <laughs> kind of threw her under the bus. And I was like, Kimber, we've already watched that. And she's like, ah, <laughs> so we have. Threw me under the bus. I knew I had seen it before. It's been a long time. Yeah, but sent you home with homework. So? I gave him homework too. Oh, what'd you toss out at him? Gotham. Ah, uh, very, very good show. Mm -hmm. We also just finished tonight, season one of Vikings. That's right. We won't be doing a review 
So let's give a couple thoughts on the show of season one. It's like Game of Thrones and Marco Polo, but set in a Viking world. See, good general description. Mm -hmm. If you like either of those two shows, I think you'll really like this show. There is some death, probably more towards uh, Marco Polo than Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. seems like. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed the first season. Would you recommend someone watch it? Yeah, if they like that kind of thing. I do. It was kind of hard for me to like learn the characters' names. I feel like they don't say their names very often. Like Ragnar and Siggy mm -hmm. and Floki and the rest of them, I don't know their names. <laughs> there are quite a few characters in with very unique names. Mm -hmm. But I think part of that delves from with a lot of other stories you've read the books and you're delving right into this TV-wise, so you don't have that added benefit. While we are talking movies and TVs, mm -hmm. Batman The Killing Joke finally has a release date. The digital version will arrive on July 23rd. But if you want to hold out for the physical release on August 2nd, you will be in store for a bunch of extras. Do you know what that's rated? It is rated mature. Would expect nothing less. <laughs> yes. From the press release, I will read this off. In addition to two 22-minute episodes from the new Batman Adventures and Batman the Animated Series, the deluxe and combo pack versions will include two featurettes Madness set to music, a documentary which chronicles the creation of the film's storyboards and original score, and Many Shades of the Joker, the tale of the killing joke. A making of short that explores the distinct style of the graphic novel. Fans who purchase the combo pack Blu-ray edition will also receive a limited edition figurine of the Joker. It'll be a cool combo pack. Mm -hmm. Alderon Etchenrich. How would you pronounce that? Put me on the spot. Always throw her under the bus. Aaron Reich. Aaron Reich. He will be Han Solo in the upcoming Han. You said Alderon. <laughs> Alden. Not Alderon. Alden on Arn Reich. Either way. He's going to be Han Solo. This poor boy whose name Will cannot pronounce. <laughs> according to THR, the film will begin shooting in January. And according to Bob Iger, will also feature Chewbacca. Chewie! It looks like Avengers Infinity War Part 1 and 2 will be getting new titles. According to um, Joe Russo told Uprox that it's just a matter of time until the new names are announced. The intention is we will change it. We just haven't come up with the titles yet, he said. Why? <laughs> Why change it? They went on to say that the movies are two very different movies. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Russo said explaining the switch for the names. It's misleading, added Anthony Russo when asked on, about the current two-part title for Infinity Wars. So apparently, even though they're kind of being filmed back to back, they have a little bit of a different direction for each film. Mm -hmm. Which kind of has me excited. We, way we don't have to wait an entire year for a story arc. Speaking of which, Infinity War Part 1 and Part 2, as titled now, are slated to hit theaters May 4th, 2018 and May 3rd, 2019, respectively and may feature as many as 67 superheroes. That's a lot of superheroes. The Russos may have also just confirmed that Captain Marvel will be in the Infinity War. They did this during a panel at the Smithsonian Institute. During the event, the Russos were speaking about the upcoming movie when they mentioned Captain Marvel by name. Call they him out. Called her out called her out. I totally knew that because I've played the Marvel Puzzle Quest game. A fan quick 
quickly pounced, asking, Did you just confirm Captain Marvel? Russo replied, Um, Captain Marvel. A totally different character. Which doesn't exist. What does that even mean? It means that they were trying to not officially confirm that Captain Marvel's going to be in the Infinity War movies. Intriguing. What pains me the most about Disney Infinity being cancelled mm -hmm. is how much material there's coming out from Rogue One later this year mm -hmm. to the Marvel movies. There's so many possibilities for these characters. Games based on movies don't tend to do very well. They don't, but it seemed like with Disney Infinity it was doing really well. I mean, it was the highest selling Toys of Life game this past fall. The highest selling of some low selling sector doesn't mean it's the good selling anything. It's true. Still pains me though. So, what's on target this week? What's on target is that we went to Universal Studios. Ooh. Which means that we went to the wizardry <laughs> the wizarding world of Harry Potter. I must say, when you hear the different when you hear the terms theme park mm -hmm. versus like um, amusement park, mm -hmm. this park really defined a difference for me. Just because every area we went into was very designed around one particular theme. Mm -hmm. You see this a little bit at amusement parks, but it's more geared towards the ride, like this ride is for a particular thing. Whereas this, it was the entire area. It's more like how Disney does it. Mm -hmm. You go to Disney World. But even, I don't know, maybe even on a grander scale. Because like, when you walked into the Wizarding World, you really felt like you were getting off the train. Mm -hmm. So we got to the park early and while you're in line for the ride in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, you're actually walking through Hogwarts. Uh, you start out, well, you start out, I don't know where you start out if the line's long because we just kind of walked right through it up until the horticulture classroom. The mandrakes, they were caged up so you couldn't pick them up and hear them scream. They were so cute though. They were very cute. The little faces poking out of the pots. Then you go into the doors and you see some statues of, I don't know who, maybe Slytherin, maybe Gryffindor, maybe someone else. Some cool statues though. You see the house cup uh, measurement device. You see, I don't want to tell you all the things you see, but you see things. You are walking around the school through classrooms, through other rooms, and eventually while you're going all around the school, which looks so neat, you get to the ride. And the ride is not a roller coaster, but it's also not just a, a sit you down in front of a screen kind of thing. It's like a totally mixed media where you are sitting down in a car that moves. And you do have on 3D glasses. I feel like you're moving sideways part of the time. You're kind of just moving all around. There are actual things that physically you see in front of you that change and then there are like screens that you see and they're blended pretty well. I mean it's not seamless. You can tell when you're looking at something that's real versus something that's on a screen but... For the most part though. It's it, quite good. Especially when at times they even blend the two together. Mm -hmm. There's real verse, not verse, real with the mm -hmm. back screen. In. It's when mm -hmm. it really shines. I screamed a lot. <laughs> yes. I think for both of us that was our favorite ride at the park. I agree. But even just walking down through Diagon Alley mm -hmm. or through the um, different shops, mm -hmm. it was very cool. I'll give you a tip. If you want to buy a wand, at least when we were there, there was a cart just outside of the Harry Potter ride near the Hippogriff ride that you could see all the different wands from the different famous wizards and witches and buy them there. There's also 
the wand store of Harry Potter where you can go and your wand chooses you. Which had about an hour wait while we were there. It was 75 minutes. So I don't know exactly how the wand choosing you thing works. Like you're still gonna have to buy the wand. So I don't know if you wait in line all that time for someone to tell you which wand you get to buy or <laughs> or like if there are other wands you can buy while you're in there or what. But We didn't make it in so we can't speak on that. If you just want to buy a wand you can buy it at the cart. And then there are people all around who are, who are showing people certain windows that they could use the wand on and interact with so maybe you only get that part if you buy it in the wand store opposed to the cart but also if you want butterbeer from the cart get it early because after we got through the ride the line was huge yeah it i was amazed at that early in the morning how many people were lined up for butterbeer mm -hmm. so universal hollywood what did you think of the rest of the park? I thought it was all really cool. I really, really liked the studio tour. Mm -hmm. It was pretty unique in going around to the different sets and the different things they mix in. Absolutely. Of course, we had to stop by the Simpsons area. Of course. That was pretty fun. Yep, got my picture with Millhouse. <laughs> got arrested on the front steps of the police station. That she did. Always causing trouble. It's true. Went to Moe's Tavern. Had a drink. Mm -hmm. Anything else to shout out about the park? Any other rides? Oh, there were tons of good rides. The Mummy ride was really good. The Transformers ride was really good. The Minions ride was really good. The Shrek ride was also really good. Like 4D with smell and other surprises. If you're heading to Universal, think of it more as um, a lot of the rides are... 4D or the type where you are putting on 3D glasses to kind of experience it that way. Mm. There's not as many roller coasters at the park, mm. but it's more based on letting you experience part of the movie. Mm. And also the water world uh, effects mm. thing. Yeah, the different effect shows, the water world one and the Hollywood effects, both of those were really good. We didn't get to see the animals of Hollywood show. We just barely missed the last showing. But the Waterworld show, all the shows we saw were good, but the Waterworld show was just unbelievable. Yeah. It was really good. Yep. Well, thanks for watching Ricochet 19. Until next week. See ya.